soon. I want to kind of lay a foundation for what I believe will be at least uh, a uh, two or three or four week series of sermons on faith. We'll see what happens after this. I want to talk for a few moments about faith, the foundation of the Christian journey. Faith, the foundation of the Christian journey. Today we come to uh, one of the most quoted and well-known chapters of the New Testament. It is commonly known as the faith chapter or the heroes of faith. This chapter is filled with inspirational illustrations and examples of ordinary people who exemplified extraordinary faith. However, in order to fully appreciate and grasp the full scope and impact of this faith chapter, it must be seen in the context of the full letter. As we read this 11th chapter of Hebrews, we must keep in mind that this letter was written to a community of believers who were in danger of drifting away from their faith. And the major purpose of this letter was to reinforce with them the trustworthiness of Jesus Christ by carefully comparing him to everything and everybody that they might have put their trust in. So whether Moses and the law, Jesus is superior. Whether Aaron and the priesthood, Jesus is superior. Whether the prophets of the Old Testament, Jesus is superior. Whether the Old Testament system of sacrifices, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so to sum up this book, one could say that the overall theme and purpose of the book is simply to remind the recipients to hold on and keep their faith in Jesus Christ. And for nine chapters, uh, the writer, as I said last week, painstakingly lays this foundation for how Jesus is superior to everything that they have already known and had. Now hold on to him. And in, in verses 32 and following in chapter 10, you get a good idea of where the writer is going with this letter of encouragement. Listen to what he says to them in verse 32 of chapter 10. He says, be ever, be ever mindful of the days gone by in which after you were first spiritually enlightened, you endured a great and painful struggle. He says, when you first received the good news, you went through a painful struggle. He says, there were times in those days gone by when you were a gazing stock, when you were publicly exposed to insults and abuse and distress. There were times when you were uh, uh, taking part in fellowship with other people who were being treated the same way. He says you did sympathize and suffer along with those who were in prison. You bore cheerfully the plundering of your belongings and the confiscation of your property. People took what belonged to you because you had turned to faith in Jesus Christ, but you took all of this in the knowledge and the consciousness that you yourselves had a better and a lasting possession. In other words, he's saying to them, remember the faith that you had when you first came into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember how bold and courageous and committed you were. Remember how you stood and withstood persecution and pressure. Remember how you stood alone when you had to still stand alone. Remember how you had your goods taken from you. You, you, were, you were excommunicated from some of your communities. Some of you lost family members. Some of you lost friends. But you endured it all for the sake of Jesus Christ because you knew that what you had in Jesus was far better than anything you had ever had before. So you held on. And now he's telling them, don't forget now. Don't give up now. Don't throw in the towel now. Don't, don't regress. Don't go back on your faith. Hold on because the one that has promised you, he's coming and he's coming, he's coming soon. So now just hold on. You could really sum up this letter by saying, hold on to Jesus. And I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that simply by the mere number of people that are here in this sanctuary, that there are those of us who this year 
in the year 2014 had occasions and times when we were tempted to give up our faith. Times when the pressure was more than we could bear. Times when things just weren't happening in a way for us that made sense. Times when we called on God and he seemed never to show up. Times when our, our lives were chaotic and confusing. When we felt alone and abandoned and deserted. Times when our prayers seemed to go unanswered and unheard. Times when sickness or sadness or sorrow, difficulty, storms. Times when, when the bottom fell out of life. Times when friends were nowhere to be found. Times when you read the Bible but it didn't seem to do anything for you. Times when you didn't feel like coming to worship and you, 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 you couldn't get into the praise and worship. And you, you, you missed a week or two from coming to church because your, your life was spinning out of control. There, there are times that try our souls and, and, and that rock our world and that try our faith. And this writer writes to tell these folks, you got to hold on. You made a good choice when you chose Jesus. Don't change your mind now. Don't give up on him just yet. Don't, don't, don't turn around. Stay the, stay the course. Can I preach today? I'm tired when I get to this service, but I got a little more preaching in me. And so, after the writer lays out for them a reminder of the kind of faith that they had, he also reminds them of what Habakkuk says. He says, now the just shall live by faith. And that's when he turns into Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is. You see, he's been talking about faith, but now he's going to give them an explanation of what faith is. A lot of times we talk about faith, but the writer want, want, wants to make them make sure that they understand exactly what faith is. So oftentimes when we hear this passage quoted, you know, we hear it quoted, but not within the context of the conversation in which it is written. This, this doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. This now faith is the substance of things hoped for is, is found in the, in, the, in the context of a conversation that the writer has been having for some time with the believers. Listen to what he says. First, he gives them a definition of faith. He says, now, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. Now, now, why does he need to say this? He needs to say this because sometimes, oh, God, help me. Sometimes we are asked to stand on something when it doesn't seem as though we have something to stand on. Huh? huh? I, I, think the, I think the rapper said something about turn down for what? And I think that the Hebrews may have been saying, hold on, for what? Huh? Hold on, for what? Well, the writer is saying, it may not seem like it, but you really do have something to hold on to and to hold on for. He says, faith is your substance. You, you don't always have substance except that you have it through faith. Oh, God. See, let me just see. Some of y'all right now are living on faith. You loan somebody some money. And they told you that they were going to get you straight. When the income tax check comes. Ain't that what they told you? <laughs> and you said, all right. 
And, and some of y'all are thinking, <laughs> come on, Kelly. <laughs> Stay with me here now. And some of you are thinking right now that you got $300 in January. You already counted it. <laughs> you are, you, you, I got to hurry up now. I preach too long, 10 o'clock. I ain't going to preach that long this service now. I know some of y'all are so glad. You said, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That word substance in the Greek is hypostasis. You know what it means literally? Not only does it indicate a foundation, but it literally means the title and deed to things that are hoped for. In other words, God has already given us the title. Normally, the only time you get the title and the deed is after you've made the final payment. But God says, I'm giving you the deed now because what you are trusting me for is as good as yours already. So people asking you what you're shouting about, they say, you ain't got the blessing, but I got the title to the blessing. And if I have the title to the blessing, if I have the deed to the blessing, that is proof that the blessing belongs to me. I'm getting happy already here. I said faith is the substance of things hoped for. That, that, that's what it is. It, it is. it is the assurance. It, it is the confidence. It, it, it is the reminder. It, it is the indication. It is the guarantee of the things I'm gazing on and believing God for. Faith is, this is faith defined. Listen, it's the substance of things hoped for, but, but it's one more thing. It is also the evidence of things not seen. That, that, that's right, I got evidence. Through my faith, I can, I can go to court with my faith. Because my faith is the evidence that, that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. That's why the scripture says we live by faith and not by sight. Because by faith we see the spiritual realities now and we deal with the present in light of that reality. That, that, that's right. And faith is the evidence of the things we can't see. Faith reminds me that, that what I can't see really exists. It is by faith that I see the unseen realities of this world. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. So we fix our focus. That's the hope of the believer. The believer doesn't focus on the here and now. The, uh, 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 the believer focuses on the there and then. All those who have no faith all they have is the present all they have is the here and now all they have is what they can put their hands on I wouldn't live like that those who have no faith all you have is what's in your pocket right now what you can see right now what you can hold right now but those of us who have faith we not only enjoy today's blessings but we enjoy tomorrow's blessings today because by faith I can taste it now I told y'all before and, uh, uh, about the little boy and, uh, whose mother was cooking cabbage and, um, and uh, she told the children always don't ever go into the pots until the food is done. You wait. But the little boy just couldn't wait. He couldn't wait. That steam was shooting out and seeping between the uh, lid and the pot, that cabbage. That pot was sweating. Hmm. And he kept looking at the pot and looking at the kitchen door, looking at the pot, looking at the kitchen door, until finally he went into that cabinet and got him a slice of bread. We used to call it light bread when I was a boy. I don't know what y'all call it now. And he took that bread and folded it up. And he looked around and he grabbed that pot when he didn't see anybody, that top, and he lifted up the top of that pot and he just wiped the bread through a steam that jumped up off of that cabbage 
put the top back down, ran onto the back porch and sat down. And his little brother came around the corner and saw him. He said, what are you eating? And he said, I'm eating cabbage. <laughs> and his little brother looked at his hand and saw that bread, that soggy bread. And he said, that isn't cabbage. And he said, oh, yes, it is. It is the substance of cabbage hoped for and the evidence of cabbage not seen. That's what the Lord gives us as believers in him. My reality says I'm broke. My faith says money's on the way. My reality says I'm sick. My faith says I'm healed. My reality says I'm lost, but my faith says I'm found. My reality says I'm alone, but my faith says, yea, though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, because thou art with me. By faith, I'm never alone. Because my faith tells me that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Evidence. Things not seen. We walk by faith. We live by faith. We trust God even when we can't trace him. We believe him even when he's incredulous. We keep our hope firm and fixed on him. And there's another reality. Let me just say this and I'm moving on. There's another reality. It's, it's, it's like Elijah when his servant saw the Syrian army surrounding Israel. And that's all the servant could see. But, but Elijah saw the armies of the Lord around the Syrian army. I wish I had a witness in here. Huh? And, the, and Elijah prayed, Lord, open his eyes so that he might see. You wonder sometimes why people have joy in intensive care? It's because of their faith. You wonder why we shout at mama's funeral? It's because of our faith. You wonder why we have peace in an unemployment line? It's because of our faith. You, you, you wonder why we're still clapping our hands even when our children have gone astray? It's because we walk by faith. God Almighty, it's the definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things that we can't see. But, but then there there, there's the dividends of faith. Faith pays off. For verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. That, that, that's what the scripture says in verse 2. That their, their faith paid off. And, and it wasn't so much what they did. And what you're going to find in verses 4 and following through the rest of the chapter, you'll find all of these examples and illustrations of the, the, the mighty faith exploits of the men and women of God who lived uh, uh, their lives based on faith. He says, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. I, I don't know about you. I want a good report. Most of us want a good report, and uh, we, we think that we get a good report by what we do. That's just a part of it. You, you get a good report based on what you believe. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? For by their faith, the elders, and I told you just a moment ago, when you start reading verse 4 and following, you, you'll see all these things that people did by faith. By faith, Abel offered a more acceptable sacrifice. I'll be preaching through some of these over the next couple of weeks. By faith, Enoch. By faith, uh, Noah. By faith, uh, Abraham. By faith, Moses. By faith, Joshua. By faith, Samson. All of these things uh, uh, people did by faith, and it was based on their faith that God rewarded them. As a matter of fact, Abraham was counted as righteous, not because he was righteous, but because he trusted God. God, help me preach for a minute. Ah, uh, God. When God asks for righteousness, I tell him I'm broke. When he asks for goodness, I tell him I'm tapped out. 
But, but the way I get my goodness and my righteousness on my account is by trusting in his son, Jesus Christ. And when I trust in Jesus, the righteousness that's on his account gets transferred over to my account. I wish I had a witness in here. That, that, that's right. All of the righteousness of Jesus Christ gets accredited to my account. Not because of my good deeds. I don't have enough of them. Not because of my righteous ways. I don't have enough of them. But because of my faith in Jesus Christ. I wish I had a witness here. Brethren, my heart's desire, prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh, Hebrews, or rather Romans chapter 10, verse 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Well, I, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to righteousness. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring? Christ down from above or to who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Yea, it is Christ who died and rose again. And if you believe in your heart Hallelujah. I said by faith are you saved through grace not of any works lest any man should boast. Somebody ought to thank God for faith that gives us our reward. God, I feel like preaching for about five more minutes now. When I get to heaven, that's what God's going to say. You didn't always do the right thing, but you trusted me. You had a few mix-ups and mess-ups, but you held on to your faith. You didn't dot every I, you didn't cross every T, but you held on to your faith. You stepped on the line sometimes. You tried to get it right, and you didn't get it right all the time, but you held on to your faith well done yeah I feel some help in here now dividends of faith by faith the elder preach pastor Houston obtained a good report how you gonna get your good report if you lose your faith you gonna get your good report if you throw in the towel? How you gonna get your good report if you turn your back on him? Yeah. I want to preach to somebody who feels like giving up today. Go ahead and squeeze their hand and tell them you can't let go now. You come too far. You can't turn around now. You've been through too much. You sacrificed too long. You stayed up too many nights. Yes, you can't let go now. Oh, a little while longer. Trust in the Lord with all that heart and lean not. To thy own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Cry if you have to, but hold on to your faith. Cry if you wanna, but hold on to your faith. the preacher here now final thing I want to tell you is that there's the definition of faith and, and, and then there are the dividends of faith but finally there's the demonstration of faith the writer says we know that the worlds were created by things that are not seen that's right the invisible uh, the visible rather started with the invisible Go ahead and read verse 3. In other words, the writer is saying that faith starts the journey. That you can't even come to God without believing that he is. I know, I know, I know, I know that some smarty pants 
have been trying to figure out how the world started a long time ago. And you got Darwinism and, and evolution and the Big Bang Theory. That's the kind of stuff that smart people say when they can't outsmart or figure God out. Wish you had me a witness here. I've been telling them all day when you look at the garments that you're wearing today and you look all smooth and, and, and fine in your dresses and your, and your suits and your, uh, you got your nice ensembles and your accessories on but what if I told you that the three piece suit you're wearing is the result of an explosion in a fabric store what if I told you that the fine garments that you're wearing had all of those wonderful colors are woven together in beautiful symmetry just based on some kind of confusion or chaotic situation that happened somewhere in a factory what if I told you that the earrings and the cufflinks and the bracelets and necklace that you're wearing happened because of an explosion in a metal factory you would find that absurd wouldn't you the truth of the matter is when you keep going back in creation you got to go on back until you find there was somebody behind it all. Do I have me a witness here? There was a time when there was nothing but God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And my faith believes that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God spoke into nothing and nothing became something God spoke into the chaos and the chaos became the cosmos God spoke into the bliss and it became the teleon God flung the stars ablazing in the heavens put the moon as the queen of the night God put the sun at the center of the universe God he did it all I trust him even when I can't trace him when it snows outside that tells me God keeping snow somewhere in the summertime when it rains that tells me that God keeping water somewhere when it ain't raining in my life tell your neighbor I'll trust him until you find something better I'll trust him until you give me something else I'll trust him till you find me another deliverer I'll trust him until you find me another way maker I'll trust him until you find me somebody else that can open doors that no man can close that can make a way out of no way I'll trust him until you find somebody who can rock me to sleep at night I'll trust him until you find me somebody that can give me peace in the midst of my storm I'll trust him until you find somebody who will send their son to die on a cross for a messed up Negro like me yes yes I'm done. I ain't mean to preach that hard. That wasn't the plan for this service. It wasn't the coach thing for this service. I'll trust him. Can you find somebody else I can trust? I'll trust him. Can you find somebody else who will put up with me? Even when I disappoint him, I'll trust him. Till you find me somebody else that can make something out of nothing. And turn my mess into a miracle. My stumbling blocks into stepping stones. I'll trust him. I want to encourage you to trust him. 2014 may have worn you out. Wonderful thing about the children of God, we'll come back, kids. 
we're resilient we don't look like what we've been through we're like the Hebrew boys we come out of the fire and you can't even tell there ain't no smoke in our garments that's the kind of faith we have that's the kind of God we serve he's trustworthy come on let's stand together counselors are coming I want to appeal to somebody now I want to make this appeal to you brother you sister you may have come to worship today you've never exercised your faith in Jesus Christ You've been listening to a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Naturalism, postmodernism, humanism. These isms that will cause us oftentimes to turn into ourselves. Let me just help you understand something. Here soft and derail. Faith does not remove intelligence from the equation. God is an intelligent God. And, 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 and there is some scientific rationale for some of the things of this world. But not even doctors can really fully explain the miracle of childbirth. All I'm saying is that there's, there's a divine aspect to it. There are certain things that scientists want to replicate, but they can't. Because there's some things that only God can do. And one of those things is only God can save us. We can't save ourselves. Don't buy into the New Age movement where we make ourselves out of a God. No, no. No, we need the one who created us. He's waiting on you. He loves you. You just open your heart Allow him to come in and be Lord of your life. Today, he'll save you. Come on, brother or sister, just step right out into one of these aisles. One of these counselors will gladly meet you and escort you to a counseling room, share with you the plan of salvation. Maybe today you say, Pastor, I, I know Christ as Savior, but my faith has been weak and weary. I've strayed away. I've had a rough year this year. And I want my faith renewed. I want my faith restored. Today I want to come back. I just want a counselor to pray for me that I might rededicate my life and restore my, my faith and my assurance in God. If that's your desire, just step out right now. A counselor will meet you and take you in an appropriate place and pray with you. Well, they won't keep you very long, but you can get your faith restored, resuscitated today. Let's be Perhaps today you've been looking for a church home and uh, you want to end the year. God bless you. God bless you. You say, Pastor, I love the Lord, but I'm without a church home today I want to connect with a church I want to end this year in uh, God bless you sister I want to end this year wonderful God bless you connected to a local church and I feel that Gethsemane is the, is the right place for me God bless you God bless you I feel that Gethsemane is the right place for me I want to make Gethsemane my home my family my place of worship and service if that's your desire come on now We'll be glad to embrace you with open arms. All right, as we 
in our service. I want to pray today for um, Sister Toya. Isn't that right? Did I say the name right? Tasha. Tasha, come on to the... I said the name wrong. It's Tasha. That's a J in there. Family, come on with us. She's not coming by herself, y'all. Come on with her to the altar. Graduated from Virginia Union. Isn't that right? Girl, I'm a union. Yeah. How's your uh, family's going to stand with you to pray? Brother Corey, how you doing? Y'all come right to the center of the altar here, and some of the ministers are going to stand with you. And uh, she's relocating to Lincoln, Nebraska. That's way out there. God is the God of Lincoln as well. Yes, he is. Um, matter of fact, yeah, we'll chat afterwards. I got a church to recommend to you out there. And uh, it's going to be a case manager there and a correctional facility. That's a wonderful blessing. Has a degree in criminal justice. That's a great career opportunity. And uh, Taja, God goes with you. We're going to pray for great success. Doors to be open, that your faith will be strengthened, and uh, that's a great opportunity to help people in crisis. And uh, I can tell you from my own my own career in uh, ex offender and offender rehabilitation, there's no more fulfilling work than working with men and women who have lost their way. If God places you in the right place uh, to be that light that they need. Amen for that season. Let's trust God together. Father, thank you for your word today. For the wonderful people who come to worship, I thank you for my brothers and sisters of Gethsemane and our visiting friends. What a wonderful year it has been. You have been faithful to us. and We're thankful. We pray today now that as a result of this message that we have received, that our faith has been enlightened and now empowered. Uh, it gets tough for us sometimes, we must admit. Give us the fortitude to hold on, uh, to trust you, Lord, even when we can't trace you. Strengthen my brother and my sister's faith, who has come in with weary faith. Today we leave reinvigorated, more determined than ever trust you. I lift Taja up before you now. Thank you, Lord. Blessing her to continue her education. And now, with this open door for her career, I pray, God, that you will go with her every step of the way. And that you will guide her and protect her. And connect her with the right people. People who are servants of the Most High God. People who can can help her, people that she can help. God, may she be equally yoked with each friend, co-worker that you will connect her with. I pray, God, that you will give her the insight and the wisdom that she needs to do well in her job, and that the men and women, that she will have an opportunity uh, to serve as case manager, and that she will counsel them with divine wisdom and insight. That they'll find their way because a godly counselor has led them. Oh God, we pray for protection, provision. Bless her, God, as only you can keep her family encouraged uh, during her time away. Bless us all now, Father, as we depart from this place. Uh, go with us. We don't know what this week holds, but we know who holds the week. So we go trusting in you you will bless us until we meet again for this is our prayer that we offer in confidence and assurance through faith in jesus name amen 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 god bless you saints i love you and god does too